Good afternoon, YouTube. Wow, it's already four o'clock. Holy cow. So today we're going to talk about 3D printing. We're going to talk about some mistakes I recently made with some PETG. Let me go ahead and go down a little bit here. I have a new tripod or a tripod I haven't used before that's a little bit taller. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the bending moment exerted on the tripod by the weight of my cell phone will not tip this guy over. So this is a handle for a project I'm working on and the it doesn't need to be super strong. I was kind of experimenting with a few things and so one thing that I did is I changed all the oh, let me turn that autofocus off it drives me crazy. One thing I did was I changed the outer wall settings to 0.2 millimeters instead of 0.4 millimeters. And I'm here to tell you, I am not a fan of it. You can almost, in fact, see kind of transparently. Um, not sure why you can see through those. It's They should be a little closer together, I think. So I had a couple problems with this print. Uh, one problem was that the raft tore off the one of the sides. It was it printed like this, and when I went to pull it up, I peeled off this side, or you know, I peeled off uh, I peeled off this face because it was only you know one layer of. Uh, it was only 0.2 millimeters. That's, you know, only one layer of PETG. So first lesson was don't um, don't set the outer shell thickness to, I would say, below 0 0.4 millimeters. That's a good two layers of uh, PETG. The other thing that I did was I printed the infill at a line width of 0.2 and it you know, it's, it seems okay. I can tell it's a little more flexible than other pieces I've built. Of course, this is one of the larger pieces that I've built. Um, one thing I also notice is that, you know, this is not really for heavy duty use, but if you were going to print something a little more heavy duty, the thin walls also are not quite as resistant. In fact, I can kind of push through here. I don't want to break this piece, but I can kind of push through here um, if I want to. So, Lesson number one is don't uh, don't reduce the outer wall thickness to below 0 0.4 millimeters. Lesson number two, I would go a little bit bigger on the raft. I think currently this one was at uh, maybe two millimeters extra. Maybe, gosh, was it even that? Maybe it was like one millimeter. Sure isn't a lot. Gosh, maybe like one millimeter. Yeah, so I think... Putting that back up to three millimeters is a little bit better. I'm still not 100% sure what I like for settings on the raft distance or the print distance from the raft and the overlap. I'm still kind of getting to uh, getting to learn, you know, getting to know the printer and how it's working. Also had some problems with this piece lifting up. You can see it kind of curve up just a little bit right there. And I've been using this tape, and this tape I'm not really liking because it's not, it's so kind of smooth on the outside that the piece is kind of lifting up a little bit when it's printing. Um, you'll notice I removed it from the bed. But uh, the piece is kind of lifting up, which means that the corners are kind of coming up. And that could be because my heated bed isn't hot enough. PETG wants like a 75, 80 degree Fahrenheit bed, and my bed only goes up to 60. But I like PETG as a material, so I'm kind of trying to work outside the box um, as far as, you know, what I'm trying to do. Also, you'll notice, like, I can kind of move this top piece a little bit. And again, that's from the, if I pushed really hard, I could probably rip it off. That's from the shell being 0 0.02 instead of 0 0.4 millimeters. Um, I think I was still printing at 30 millimeters per second. I could go into all the settings, but uh, this was, I want to say 10% infill and I was printing at 30 millimeters a second. So I might try to glue this thing on. Um, it would be a little bit ugly, but I might try just to kind of see how gluing this stuff works. 
anyways, just thought I would share that with you. <clears throat> I've had better results with a raft. Uh, I have had bad results with a skirt or a brim. Now, possibly on the build tech, let me go back up to the build tech. This, uh, this surface is called build tech. I don't know if other companies have different proprietary names, but that's what this one from a mono price is called. Mono price select mini V2, by the way, in case you're curious. Um, but I've had bad problems with skirts and brims. And the thing is, if I print it with a skirt or a brim, the piece prints directly onto the tack. The raft is nice because it prints on a raft. So if I can pull the piece off and the raft is stuck, then when I'm trying to pry the raft off, I'm not worried about damaging the piece. But if I print with a skirt or a brim, a skirt being just kind of a few lines around the outside and a brim being kind of like the brim of a hat, just a little edge around it, the brim can be hard to remove and the skirt, um, the main downside of the skirt in my opinion is that I think a raft is better. So if you have, if you're not having issues with adhesion and or removing the build item from the plate, maybe a skirt is uh, good enough for you. I would recommend a large number of skirt lines, like three, four, or five, just because the the force, um, the amount of force uh, of the filament, you know, it's just the the little extruder here is just pushing out the filament very, very, or the the feed motor is not putting a ton of force into it. So if you have some gunk built up on the head, the extruder is just going to kind of make a mess as it's you know starting the print. So if you have a skirt with two lines and you're still printing garbage, by the time it actually starts to print your print, it could still be printing garbage. So I find that with the raft, it uh, even if, you know, so the raft is essentially at a minimum three different layers. You have, it kind of goes, um, I'll try to think here. I think it goes like vertical and then diagonal and then horizontal. So typically the vertical one, it'll take maybe, um, you know, maybe just a couple passes to where it cleans off the head and then it starts going nice and evenly. Then the diagonal one will kind of make, will, you know, connect all those other ones together and then the horizontal one kind of ties it in. I've, I've been having decent luck with uh, one top layer of the raft. I don't think printing two or three top layers of the raft is really going to give you a lot of benefit. Um, but like I said, I've been having much, much better luck with the raft. When I first started out, I tried the skirt, I tried the brim. Um, you know, a lot of people are using tape, but uh, it really kind of depends on what filament you're using. I'm using PETG, which you're supposed to use on a glass bed heated to about 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I could probably replace this bed with a glass bed and maybe someday I will do that. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. But at any rate, I just wanted to share that with you because I hope that, uh, you know, other people can kind of learn from my mistakes. Um, it, it, it broke my heart, you know. It's funny how like emotionally connected you get to the stuff you print. Um, when I started peeling this off, I, my heart just sank. I, I felt so bad, you know. Of course, it takes kind of a while to print this. I think this was like a two and a half hour print. And when I peeled it off, I just thought, no, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> the raft was sticking to this. I've had some problems with the raft sticking to the build in a couple of places, which is another great reason to have a thicker shell so that the shell's a little stronger when you peel the raft off, it doesn't rip the piece off. Um, it's probably I need to have better settings on the distance between. I'm currently at, I think, 0.4 distance with 0.2 overlap and I'm not kind of exactly sure how those distances work, practically speaking, but just wanted to share that with you, YouTube. You know, it's kind of a work in progress here. It's still, of course, a, a phenomenal machine, and I'm having, other than my own sort of errors, it, it seems to be operating as it should. Um, I might try, I don't know if I'm going to print this again in the near future, possibly, but the next time I print, I might try to go... On the build tech, I just, I really need a better way to remove it from the build tech. I've, I've heard of people using hairspray. I'm just a little reticent to use hairspray because, you know, it's an aerosol and it dries sticky. And 
those surfaces and these surfaces and you know like the fan bearing i'm really not trying to get hairspray over all this stuff so i think maybe i'll like put a plastic bag over it square a little hairspray and then take the plastic bag off so i'm not getting hairspray overspray on all this stuff till next time youtube keep printing let me know uh, if you like these videos on the 3d printing i'm going to be uh, continuing to do them uh hopefully Hopefully I'll still have time even when I'm working to do this 3D printing stuff. I don't plan on quitting in the near future. I hope to have this baby with me for a long, long time, and I do do my best to take good care of it. In fact, we'll put our uh, custom custom cover back on, which I just kind of I cut a little uh, I cut a little hole on the side here. My place is a little bit dusty. Um, I live next to the freeway, so when the windows are open, I kind of get a lot of junk in the air. Um, but anyways, until next time. Like, comment, subscribe, and keep 3D printing.